day and all of that good stuff. I pray that you have had an incredible day. I'm trying to get a little bit of that sun in here. Uh, I praise God for the sun. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome, 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 welcome. I pray that it's been tremendous. God has been so faithful to me. I'm so grateful to that. I'm grateful for who he is and I'm grateful to for who he is in your life as well. So come on in the room, sharing is caring, and because we care, we share, and all that good stuff. Just want to get some people encouraged um, about what God is doing. He is so very, very faithful. Um, I want to say welcome to all of our replay viewers. You have been faithful. You have been consistent, and I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful that, you know, the word of the Lord is in our mouth for you as well, and all of that good stuff. And to those of you who are new, welcome. And to those of you who have been rocking with us for a while, welcome back. It's always a pleasure to have you. So come on in. Hey, Ladybird747, God bless you. Um, hopefully this, this light will be right. <laughs> um, welcome, welcome. I'm so grateful um, that the Lord continues to move in each of our lives. This title of this live today is, It's Time to Take It Now. Sometimes we want to be so sure and like we've asked for 50,000 million confirmations like, God, I need another one. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. And I just believe God that um, he is saying that the time is now. Now is the time. And so I wanted to release that word over us because no one wants to miss the timing at all over our lives. She said, it's 11 o'clock in London. Wow, well, I'm so glad that you are here. Actually, one of our mentees is in London. There was another one in another part of Europe and um, another in India. And so I praise God for all of your sacrifices. Those of you who are coming in from South Africa, shout out to you. Those of you from Canada, Switzerland has been showing up kind of heavy lately. Um, and so I'm grateful to the Lord for your connection as we are brothers and sisters in Christ, you know, here for his kingdom, for his kingdom purposes to be done. So blessings to you, Lady Chastity. And so for those who are going to come on in, you know, hopefully I'll be able to greet them before we end up, um, the, the, the message today. Um, as I was in my studies, you know, the, there's times where um, we come to understand, like, I don't just come or study the word to speak a message you know I study because that's what God has told me to do um, as, as a servant and just as a believer you know I want to read about him I want to know about him but it's one of those things that is just part of my life my lifestyle and so oftentimes the word of God will come just out of my studies for studying to live and then there's other times the words will be dropped into my heart and through prayer through intercession or things in which he causes us to see or walk through and so I'm so grateful for that and so one of the things that um, God was speaking in my studies today was it's time to take it now there are some things you know we have portals we have windows of time there are kairos moments that occur over our life and we can't afford to allow anything to hold us back and a matter of in fact, the text of scripture that we're going to be covering uh, today, it has to deal with those who allow fear to get in the way. And a lot of the times, you know, I mean, it's normal. It's hu It's part of our humanity, right? But we are spirit beings who are having a human experience. And so, you know, we have to be able to take control over our flesh, take control over those experiences and take control over those motions that can hinder us from being able to experience the fullness of God. You know, there is a do not fear written over 365 times in our Bible. Why? It's because God wants you to remember every single day of every single year that this is not for you to fear. He's not given us that spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And so oftentimes that's what the enemy tries to throw at you to try to hinder you from walking into everything that God has for you. And so what are you afraid of? What is holding you back? Because it's not worth it at the end. I was listening to a documentary the other day and they were speaking. There's this woman who did studies. She was a nurse for hospice. And so she collected so much data after time, you know, just being there and being able to listen and be comfort to those um, who who were about to make their transitions and you know one of the things that she said that she noted in nearly every case is the fact that there were people who had regrets for what they didn't do oftentimes it wasn't regrets for what they did but it was regrets because of what they didn't do and um 
looking at that, you know, I, I, I don't want to ever have anything get in the way, which is why you all have heard me say, you know, I'd rather um, have to deal with, you know, rejection than to have to deal from, with regret. You know, there are so many people who obviously did not reach certain thresholds or pinnacles because of fear and um, not wanting to cross it. But I refuse to let that be my reason. And when you look even at the account with the children of Israel, those who were initially in the wilderness, those who were supposed to come out of Egypt, like you went through all that slavery, all that long suffering to get through the Dead Sea, to get in the wilderness, to end up dying off and not making it like, yo, ain't nobody got time for that. And, you know, and is it because there's something that is in between you and your promised land and God is asking for you, God is calling for you to literally take a risk. God is calling for you to step out and trust him. God is calling for you to move forward in that thing. God is calling for you to do that. And so they end up later in Numbers chapter number 14, like, oh, bet, no, nah, we're going to go, we're going to go up. And God was like, no, nah, it's too late. Y'all can go up if you want to. You ain't, you ain't going, I'm not going with you and you're going to get whooped. And, you know, so the timing of God is ever so important. And I don't want to live in an alternative plan of God. I don't want to live in a plan B of God. And do I got anybody with me? Like, I don't want, I don't want to be in the plan B. I don't want a consolation prize. I want to walk in everything that God has always intended over my life. And I believe that that's why you're here. Like, you're like, nah, I, I, I can't afford, I don't want to go without, I don't want to miss, like, I don't even want you to tickle my flesh and make me feel good. I want to know what it is for real, for real. And I want to do what needs to be done. And so he says um, in the scripture that I, I'm not giving you a spirit of fear, but of power, and of love and of a sound mind. In another translation, it says of a disciplined mind. And, you know, when you look at soundness of mind, that peace that passes all understanding. But when you look at discipline, some, that's something that you have to do. And so some of us have to discipline our mind. We have to discipline our thoughts. We have to discipline our hearts. We have to discipline us to do the things that God is calling forth for us to do so that we can walk in the fullness of everything that he desires from, for us to experience in the first place. And so what what is God desiring for you to walk in? And what are you waiting to enter into? What are you waiting? What conditions are you waiting to change or to be different for you to step into what God is calling for you to do? Like, again, I refuse to live in the plan B of God or in a consolation prize. So let, let's continue. Um, I'm starting in Numbers chapter number 13, and it says this in verse number one. So God spoke to Moses, send men out to scout the country of Canaan that I am giving to the people of Israel. So God didn't say that you have to earn, that you have to hope that you get, but he said that I am giving to them, right? And so there are some things that God has just, he's giving it to you and he's calling forth for us to partner with him in whatever that may be. Like we have to lay hold of it. We have to take possession of it. It is time for us literally to possess our possessions. Many of you, you are coming to, you've asked God for divine do-overs and God is saying they are here. Your do-over is here. It is here. It is for you and it is even now. And so he says, I want you to send one man from each ancestral tribe, each one a tried and true leader in the tribe. God is calling for leaders and God is raising up leaders. There are some of you who have felt like, you know, you don't know why things have always been so challenging for you or difficult for you. And, you know, maybe you weren't the firstborn, but it was different for it hit different. And that's because you've been called to be a leader. You've been called to be a pioneer. And God is desiring to use that in this hour. And so he's like, listen, I want you to go. I want y'all to scout it out. And I want to know how many of you have scouted out the land. And there's times where we see, you know, the, the figs and the pomegranates and the grapes and we see it and it's so big. Oh my, but are we letting other things hinder us from possessing, from occupying, for laying hold of everything God says? So it says here, I'm going to skip ahead to verse number 17. Actually, just verse 16 says this. These are the names of the men Moses sent to out, scout out the land. And so what's interesting to me, like we hear their names here. We'll, we'll hear their name no more. 
no more in the scripture. And I refuse also to be a footnote of, you know, just the things that I didn't do. I didn't go after. I didn't accomplish. And I'm saying for me, because I'm hoping that I inspire somebody who's here, right? That you should go after everything God has for you so that you don't end up just being a boot in the scripture, right? There should be more that the scripture has for you. Or even, you know, what it says about Lot's wife in Genesis chapter number, I believe it's chapter number 18, how she looked back and she turned into a pillar of salt, like, literally we don't hear about her no more until it comes in to the new testament when jesus said remember lot's wife like will you have that i mean that's a drop the mic moment do you re want to be remembered in such a way where they say remember them like and it's our everybody already knows you know the story behind it who could have achieved who should have achieved who god set up who have things in their heart who had all of the things that could work with them work for them work on their behalf but for whatever reason they didn't they didn't didn't cross over. They never took possession. They didn't hold on to the things that God intended for them. And so, except for this, it says in verse number 16, these are the names of the men Moses sent to scout out the land, but Moses gave Hosea, which means salvation, son of Nun, a new name. His new name was Joshua, God saves. And I wanted to share that because God is saying, there are those of you that he's already changed your name. He's changed your name. He's changed your assignment. He's changed what he's called you to do. And so literally it went from him, you know, being a form of salvation. There was only so much he could do right within himself i mean he was a fighter he, he helped them defeat so many things as he took on the armies for on behalf of moses because at a point moses was too old to fight so he came from being uh you know one who bared salvation to joshua uh, which he embodied the fact that god saves god is adding an exponent to who you are god is multiplying your capacity and what you can do not just in and of yourself but to those that you are connected to because it's necessary for his purposes in Jesus name. And so verse 17 says this, when Moses sent them off to scout out the land, he said, go up through the Negev and then all the hill country, look the land over, see what it's like. There are those of you got to just ask you to look it over see what it's like. He says, assess the people, you know, is they strong enough? God has just asked you to do an assessment and have you begun to do this assessment, but your assessment didn't factor in God. Was your assessment that you took when you were like, God, I don't know if I can do that right. It ain't just you. It's not you doing it by yourself. God is causing many of you to have helpers. He's sending divine assistance to you. And my prayer is that God would open your eyes so that you can see that there are more before you than those that are against you right and so God is saying and not to mention the fact that you're not doing this by yourself you got God he's doing it with you he is going before you in the name of Jesus and so he says look just do an assessment that's all I'm asking you to do and then he says you know is it fertile is it barren are there forests you know I want you to scout these kind of things out so we know what we're coming up against but we're going to come up against it like you know we're going to take hold of everything God said was ours and then it goes on to say at the end of that of that section of verse number 20 and try to bring back a sample of the produce that grows there. This is the season for the first ripe grapes. I want to say that to y'all in the name of Jesus. Like This is the season for you for harvest. This is the season of the ripening of that which is first in Jesus name. And so God wants you to lay hold of it. God wants you to partake in it. And so the next verse says, with that, they went on their way. With that, they were on their way. There are those of you who have already obeyed God and you are on your way and then there are others of you that God is getting ready to cause you to be on your way. Take the instructions that he has given you, but don't imagine, don't envision a future without him in it. That's not what he's called forth for you to do. And so, you know, if you skip forward ahead, it says they cut off a branch with a single cluster of grapes and it took two men to carry it slung on a pole. That's how big it was. They also picked some pomegranates and some figs. This is the time where God is causing you to come into victories, into harvest, where it's just in, in more than one area. It's in more than one thing. God is calling for that for you. And so if you continue on, it says, 
after 40 days, actually, um, it, it speaks of how they named the place Eshkol Valley, Great Cluster Valley, because of the huge cluster of graves they had cut down there after 40 days. And we know that 40, you know, in the in the Hebrew represents a time of testing or a time of probation. And it represents a time where then the judgment or a verdict would be rendered. And so we don't have to be afraid of judgment or, you know, verdicts as people of God, because just like it can go against one person, it can be found in your favor. And I believe God that those of us who are operating in that sensitivity, in that obedience unto the Lord, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, that you're coming into the place where judgment is being rendered in your favor, where the scales are being tipped even in your favor. And this fact that the timing of judgment, the time of judgment is indicating that it is time for your victory, saith God, in the name of Jesus. I'm telling you, it is here and it is upon you. It says, after 40 days of scouting out the land, they return home. So 40, 40, 40, there are some of you, you know, maybe it's been 40 days since that last issue, since that last thing. Maybe God has called you on a 40-day fast, 40-day consecration. Maybe there are those of you, you're turning 40 this year, whatever the case may be. God is saying, and then there's others of you. It's even a prophetic representation that that old time, that old season, that time of testing, that time of probation is coming to an end. Moses, he went up on the mountain twice for 40 days and 40 nights. Jesus, he went, went into the wilderness to be tempted of the enemy for 40 days and 40 nights. I'm telling you that God is saying unto you all that your time of testing is over in the name of Jesus. Now, there are others of you that you may be coming into your time of testing. And if you look at that, you know, we've already begun Lent and we're right about 40 days before we even come and we cross over into, you know, resurrection. And so the window of time, it's a pregnant window of time. For some of you, that 40 day marker begins today. God is saying that this is being rendered in your faith in the name of Jesus. There are those of you, you felt like you were off wandering, trying to figure it out. And God is saying, even at the end, you are going to be returning home. Listen, let us continue. It says this, they presented themselves before Moses and um, before Aaron and the whole congregation. They reported to the whole congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. Then they told the story of the trip. Again, they reported, they showed them, and then they told the story. There are those of you that you're going to come, that you're going to report your story. You're going to show, hallelujah, even the goodness in which you were able to come into contact in Jesus' mighty name. And you're going to be able to have that proof, that evidence. God is saying he's going to cause you to have evidence in Jesus' name. Verse 27 says, we went to the land to which you sent us and oh, it says it does flow with milk and honey. Just look at this fruit. They were doing good right there. They said, just look at this fruit. Come on, Lady Chastity. Just look at it. Just look at what God has done. It says the only thing is that the people who live there, and that's where they messed up. They had to add the extra. The only thing is, is there a place in your life where you put a butt where God is like, I didn't ask you that. Who asked you that? Or, or maybe, you know, you have felt like there were so many good things when you did your survey, but somebody else was like, well, the only thing is, or or, you know, but, you know, and they sowed some doubt into your life. They sowed doubt into your heart. Now, all of a sudden, you feel in the type of way because you're like, God, how is this going to be? Like, I don't even know how this is going to work. And so here are them. They want to give this account. And God is saying, don't look at your fear, fear, fear. I love this. Dr. Faith Wakoma said this at Mantle Conference last year, uh, 2023. She said that fear is looking at a future that is absence of God. Because when you add in the God factor, Factor, like nothing is impossible to him that believe it there and with God all things are possible according to uh, Luke chapter number one verse number 37 so are you looking at a possibility are you looking at a future that doesn't consider the God factor in your life the God of the God of you know Abraham Isaac and Jacob showing up just like he does are you consider that's what fear is fear is saying this is just it's, it's, if it's up to me and and God is not being factored in the situation, but he's not called for us to do that. Hallelujah. So again, they said the only thing is, and there are some people who are having things to say about things that God has showed you, spoken to you. And that's why it's important. You can't tell everybody your praise report. You can't tell everybody your testimony. You can't tell everybody what God is getting ready to do. Like they're not ready for that. And so what ends up happening, um, and I want to encourage you, sometimes you got to tell people just, 
go on ahead. That's all right. I already know. Bet. Good. You know, cool. Or ask them to just go on ahead and, you know, we can keep that to ourselves. My mom used to say, if you ain't got nothing nice to say, don't say nothing at all. Is it helpful or is it hurtful? If it's not helpful, you can keep that right onto yourself. You know, tap at the brown and say, you know, if you can't have a good day, don't go messing up nobody else's. Mind your business. You know, stay in your own lane. And some of you have to be able to tell people thank you, but no thank you. Go on ahead and keep that right there because you, you need to keep your eye gates, your ear gates pure before the Lord. But there was a ram in the bush. So if we skip ahead to verse number 30, it's says and Caleb interrupted sorry not sorry there are some of you I pray that you have the courage to just go on ahead and tell sorry not sorry like I, I just got to give you this right here sorry not sorry I'm gonna interrupt you right there thank you but uh er, you know pause just a minute he, he, Caleb interrupted and he called for silence there are some of you you need to call for a silence you know that I just need us to have a silent asylum right now but because right now the word of the Lord is not in your mouth there are some of you you started off good I believe it's in first Kings maybe around chapter number 13 and it speaks of um, of the young prophet who was doing fine he had the word of the Lord in his mouth you know he everything that he said was what was happening it was coming true and then he runs into this old prophet is the old prophet feeling away because God ain't really giving him nothing no more and so he was like hey come to my house and he was like no but God said you know I, I shouldn't do that or whatever and he was like no you good come on with me and so he gets and he gives him you know a, a pass because he's like oh he's seasoned you know why would anybody do things like that but this is not the hour where you give everybody passes this is the hour for your discernment to be heightened now discernment is different than paranoia like you can't be like oh paranoid because that means that God my prayer is that he would help you overcome that fear that fear of man those other things that have you or that PTSD that trauma that came from things that how they happened before because God is doing a new thing he's resetting so here he is he goes with the dude they sitting down at the dinner table and after he done ate a meal God told him don't eat nothing don't drink nothing like there were so many red flags right there he was like and don't go back the way that you came and nonetheless he ended up doing everything that God said don't do and so here come the old prophet he was like by the way you about to die what hold up wait a minute like how and, and, and that's the thing you know we are accountable for our own stuff you know so you can't be like well this person told me that or I was following what they said or you know typically they're on or you know what I'm saying the, the, the grace of the Lord was on their life or maybe the prophetic word was in their mouth but then there are people they are apt to err was this man operating in pride or insecurity was he feeling like he had had already been canceled did he want to be important was he jealous was he envious of him or the other people that he would minister to listen there are people that are operating in these areas these places that insecurity that drives and it looks like pride but there's other things that are there and just because people can shout louder don't mean you know or scream louder or be more boisterous or sound more powerful doesn't mean necessarily that they're carrying that grace of almighty god matter of fact there are those whose hearts are pure where they're able to be quiet be still before the lord and they are observing they're observing and they're seeing they're seeing things in which you do not know and some of you have been lacking your answer because you are not trying to ask the person who ain't out there just running their mouth you know trying to make it but they see they see and they saw you know yeah can they see do they see can they hear do they hear are they operating absolutely and they are ready to be of a divine assistance to you but here comes this old prophet he's over here volunteering you know want to say this that and the other and he led him straight into death and there are some of you maybe it's not going to be a physical death but maybe things are dying off in your life maybe it's your hope maybe it's your joy maybe it's your peace maybe it's the time that you feel like you're losing from your life because somebody said no nah, I don't think that's it but there is something on the inside of you that is saying no nah, that gotta be right that gotta be right this is not the time that you give deference to other people just because they were right at one point in their life just because they were right for several years of their life and maybe they are still accurate but maybe that's an area that's, that's too close to home and so that it presents another issue there's other things that are going on and so we pray for them we pray for God's mercy for them but you don't want it to derail your destiny you don't want it to derail your destiny and everything that God intended for your life and so he was like, dude, you about to die. And he's like, what? Hold on, wait a minute. Like, do I get mercy, Lord? Like, I mean, is this blood on his hands? Technically, but you heard, like, 
God gave you an ear to hear. And so we're accountable also for what God speaks to us. We're accountable for what God tells us and what he, what he has for us, right? Because those are things that we have to walk out and we can't always be like, well, such and such said or did or what have you. It doesn't mean, and even if God deals with them, it doesn't mean that it's not going to cause you to have to deal with your consequences because, you know, before you, with anybody else, you got to know God's voice for yourself. And so, you know, he goes out there and he ends up being attacked and he ends up dying on the spot. And so here come the old prophet telling his kids, go saddle up, you know, my, my, my animals so that I can go ride down there and get them. Because, you know, he really was a good dude. Again, I don't want, you know, certain things to be on my tombstone and that's it. And I die before my time. May that not be, and, and not in any area. I don't want, you know, my future to die before it's time. I don't want my livelihood to die before it's time. I don't want my future, my, the, the things that God has called for, for me to do, my, my investments, my businesses, you know, family, marriage, you know, children. I don't want anything in my life to die off before it's time or end up being omitted because I failed to obey God because I let someone else's voice dictate or indicate the moves that I made. So we find they're saying all this negative stuff and, you know, they got the whole, you know, tribe of Israel, right? They are the, all the tribes of Israel. They got them all caught up of uh, chapter number 14, you know, so much so where Moses and uh, Joshua and Aaron, they are rent, they rent their clothes. They are crying out to God, Lord, have mercy. Please forgive us because immediately God's anger was, he was furious. He's furious like that because there are some things that he wants for us more than we realize that we want for ourselves. There are things also because he's looking at it like, don't you trust me? Don't you love me? Like, don't you believe that I want what's best for you? Don't you trust that I've already given you the keys to the kingdom? Don't you trust that I'm going to do what I said that I was going to do? Don't you trust that if I made you the promise in the first place, all these other little details, I'm going to work out. I got you. I got it. And so God is furious with them and so the plague stops he's like you know what i, I ain't gonna kill i ain't gonna kill y'all but you are gonna die off and you're not gonna go you ain't gonna see that lord let that not be us and so here caleb is he was like bet not me yo uh, uh i need we're gonna render a silence we're going we're gonna to render a silence right here. And he interrupted. This is a time when it has to deal with your destiny. People might have to feel like you a little rude. You know, and I'm all for one for graciousness and for honor. And I'm one for being a lady. And I am one for all of those things. I am. But at the same time, when it comes to my destiny, you better think about it. That mama bear, you know, that fierce lion energy you got, man of God. I don't even like to use energy the way people use it now. But, you know, that that fierceness, that ferociousness, it's time for it to rise up. There's a time for us to be a lion and there's time for us to be a lamb. You know, God, he's also calls us to be, you know, um, a wise as serpent but gentle as doves. There's a time for you to utilize that wisdom. And there's a time for that lion, that lioness for it to rise up in you. Come on. You know, it was the lionesses that also defended the pack. You better know what you called to do. And sometimes you got to let them know. You got to let them know. And so here we find Caleb, he's like, you know, y'all think what you want to think, but not my destiny, not my destiny. So he interrupts them. And then he called for silence before Moses and said, he did before Moses. He showed his proper honor there and said, let's go up and take the land now. That's what God wanted me to tell you to do today. He said, go up now and take the land. It's a land that God has already given you. And he says this, we can do it. I came on here to tell you, beloved Lady Tiadra, that you can do it, whoever you are, wherever you are. I know that there is life and it makes it feel like the odds are insurmountable. Maybe you've heard stories of other people that weren't successful in that field. They weren't successful in that area. There are others who, you know, maybe are, you know, and because they're, they're putting their fears off on you because because they went through this or because they had to go through that or maybe it ran in your family or it ran in your bloodline yeah till it ran into me now right until it came to me because I'm built different I'm cut different I'm not gonna act like I'm above reproach but I just don't get down like that because not that I'm so wonderful not that I'm so gifted but nobody I, they, they're not gonna be beat me in my pursuit of the Lord and my heart for the Lord and what the spirit of the Lord is saying unto me and my hunger 
hunger for him and my hunger after him, my desire to please him, my desire to make the dash count. You know, there's the birthday and there's the dash in between. And then, you know, there's the death day. I, I need to make the dash count. It's a blip when you look at eternity, but I want it to count. I, I need eternity to matter. I need my purpose, my existence in this life for it to count. And I believe that there are many of you who are like, I need this to count. It has to count for me. Everything that I've been through, this is the time for you make the devil pay for everything that you had to, uh, to go through, the, everything that you endure. Matter of fact, there's only some, the reasons why you agree with some of them or weren't sure about certain areas of your life because you know, you went through it, like, you know what that was like. And so you've had these moments where you feel like, you know, can I do it? Am I able, you know, am I good enough? Is, is God, have I done enough for him for he to do it for me? It was never about your goodness. It was never about who you are. You know, we serve a God for his namesake. He said, I exalt my very word above my name. You know, he, he said, I, 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 he swore to Abraham that he would do it, what he said. And it wasn't that Abraham was perfect, but he even charged God faithful who made the promise in the first place, just like Sarah, according to Hebrews chapter number 11 and 11. It says in the Romans chapter number four, that Abraham, he, he, he hoped against hope. He, when, when, and even as he hoped against hope, he, it says he counted not the deadness of Sarah's womb, nor even, you know, the deadness in, in his own loins. Like this is not the time for you to look at what you are able to do. It's time for you to look at what God is able to do. And he's able to do anything but fail. Some of you are literally just going to be the poster child for what, because you showed up and you literally, he did the rest. There are so many battles where it says that God fought for them. God for, and God is going to fought for you. And so even as the word speaks of in Romans chapter number four, when God, he could swear by none greater. I can't swear, but, but he swore by himself. Matter of fact, in Genesis chapter number 15, when God reminded Abraham of the promise, because he was like, go look out there go look and, you know, see, uh, the, uh, come out of your tent. I want you to see real, real good. And I want you to look at all the stars in the sky, see if you can number them. And he was like, God, you know, you, I mean, this sounds good. And there are some of you who are like, God, this sounds good good. You know, how do I know that this is going to be? And he was like, I guess you're going to do it, you know, through my servant because you ain't gave me no kids. Like you, it's like, Lord, you're making me these promises, but I don't see it yet. You said it in Genesis chapter number 12. You told me get away from my people. I've been isolated. I've been out here in these streets. It's just me. I'm trying to do the best that I can, trying to keep my hope alive or whatever. And the years are flying by Lord, and I'm still waiting. And so in Genesis chapter number 15, he was like, God, how? God, you know, okay, I mean, I believe you. And so God was like, you know, I bet. Go on ahead and get these little, get these animals. I need you to get this. I need to prepare them like this. And I don't even need you for this. Go on ahead and get you some sleep. Go on ahead and get you some rest. Because God, when he could swear by none greater, he swore by himself. And so he ended up cutting the covenant with himself for Abraham. That's why he didn't need him to be awoke. He cut the covenant for Abraham. So the covenant was for Abraham, but it wasn't with him necessarily. He didn't need him for that. He he already deemed him good that he chose him. And there are it's not it's not because of no goodness of your own. It's the fact that God chose you for this assignment. And so when you were looking at what disqualifies you, it wasn't that you were qualified necessarily in the first place. It's the fact that God chose you. And so there are those of you you didn't not qualify yourself so you can't disqualify yourself. You didn't hire yourself so you cannot fire yourself. You know, it's it's not you, boo. You didn't choose yourself so you can't unchoose you. All he's looking for you to do is have a surrender and obey him in the first place. And so at the end of that chapter, he's like, you know, uh, you, that you're you going to have all these people and they're going to be slaves for about 400 years in Egypt. But don't trip. When they come out, they're going to spoil who was spoiling them. And there are those of you, you have felt like, where were you, God, when I was going through this? Where were you, Lord, when I was going through that? And he was like, I already made account for that. You know, I'm reading to you in Numbers chapter number 13, something that had already taken place three books before it, you know, in, in, in Genesis. Genesis chapter number 15, pretty close to the beginning. And so here are his descendants living out what God had already spoken. So when you are in the place where you feel like, God, don't you know, like, do you see me? I'm out here in these streets. God already knew about it, already wrote about it and already has a plan. And which is why we need to come into agreement. Come on, Lady Nikki, with what he said in the first place. And so he says, I need, let's go up and take the land now, not tomorrow, not next year, not next week, not next month. He said now. 
now. Let's take it now. And I want to say that to you that you can do it in the name of Jesus. I know that it feels impossible, but you can do it. You can do it. You can achieve it. You can accomplish it. You can go after it. It can happen for you. Hallelujah. Yes, the time absolutely is now. The time is now. It's right now. It's right. As a matter of fact, for some of you, it was earlier this morning. For some of you, it was yesterday. Like for some of you, it felt like it was a year ago. What right now, what you're walking into, Lady Mindy, is just a, another opportunity that God is bringing it around again. This is your divine do-over. This is your divine do-over. I spoke last week about um, the, the time of Purim. And what happens during um, Purim is it's a celebration for the fact that it was a time that literally that things were turned around even for the Israel when they were um, when they were in Esther chapter number what what Esther chapter number nine and so here they are in this other land and God has still had a way out for them and there are those of you and not not to mention it was a dar thirteen but when they didn't finish she Esther asked for another day a dar fourteen and so they had another time, another opportunity. There are those of you, you're going to come into another opportunity, another turn in the name of Jesus. The God is bringing it back around again. And may you not miss your moment. May you not miss your moment. And, and don't be thinking that it's going to look like it looked like before. Sometimes it doesn't look identical, but you have to see the opportunity and seize it in the moment. The lifetime of an opportunity is in, you know, uh, or the opportunity of a lifetime is found in the lifetime time of that opportunity so see it and seize it go after it and so here they are they were looking at what looked like it could be an obstacle what looked like it could get in the way what looked like you know and so instead of seeing all the negatives where is the positive instead of seeing the no see the yes instead of seeing you know all these potential objections not only instead of saying what could go wrong what could go right what could go right? And God has made this promise to you, Brother Brian. God has made this promise to you, Lady Laquita. It's time for you to go after everything the Lord said. Not tomorrow, not next year. Let's go up and take the land now. You can do it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for every son and daughter of God who will hear this word, Lord, and who have been wondering, who've been contemplating, or who have been dealing with this fear that has seemed like it's overcome them, or even those, Lord, they weren't certain, they weren't sure, and so they asked other advisors, they asked people who may have been more seasoned than them, Lord, and they may have received instruction, they may have received words, and, you know, they were trying to go with it because they also were taught, you know, to honor their elders or honor those who may seem that they're more esteemed in an area than them, Lord God, but there's something in them that says, I can't just sit back. I just can't sit back with that. And so here is Caleb and here is Joshua. They're some of the younger ones, Lord. Oh, but they said, Caleb said, nah, bet. Mm -mm. We can do it. We can take it. We can go up and do it. And so Lord, I believe, hallelujah, that there are some Caleb's and some Joshua's that are even gathered here. And even though there have been others who have been spreading scary rumors and whatnot, and there have been others who have been moved by their feelings, and it's not for us to be moved by our feelings because feelings can be fickle. Feelings can be fake, oh God, but may we trust in what you have spoken. May we trust what you have said in the name of Jesus, Lord God. May we not be moved, those who are moved by our emotions, even as fear is, but may we cause it to come under subjection unto you in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that there is trust in you, that there's trust, that they are not going at it alone. Maybe by themselves, it may seem impossible. It may seem challenging. They may not understand how in the world that this is going to happen. Oh Lord, but they can trust that it is you. It is with you and because they can trust that it is with you Lord God there is nothing shall be impossible to them nothing shall be impossible and so Lord I thank you that they will defy odds this day in the name of Jesus I thank you Lord God that you will bless them and you will bless those that bless them you will curse those that have cursed them in the name of Jesus Lord God you will send them the divine help that they need in the name of Jesus you've already hallelujah have them you've already been preparing them on the backside of the mountain 
mountain on the backside of the desert. I thank you, Lord God, that they're getting ready to come into everything that you ever spoke over their life in the name of Jesus, Lord. You are faithful that promise and you do amazing things. You do wonderful things. You do glorious things. You are awesome. You are mighty. May we not be like those who start off well and don't finish well. Lord, give us the anointing, hallelujah, the grace to finish, to complete the things that you call forth for us to complete, to finish strong. Let us not be tired. Let us not be weary in well-doing. I thank you that we will reap because we fainted not in the name of Jesus. I bless you, Lord, that they can make it. I thank you, Lord God, that they can take it. They can take everything that needs to be taken. Hallelujah for the glory of the Lord. So they are able to walk into everything that you spoke over their life, everything that you said was possible. I decree that they shall walk in it. They shall they shall walk in it they shall walk the length and the breadth of it and there are some of them lord god that they've already previewed the land they've already assessed the landscape and you are causing them hallelujah to be like the joshua's and be like the caleb's where they don't just preview it but they go in and possess it that they go in and take it lord may they not be passive lord but may they be aggressive in the spirit in the name of jesus and may they walk out whatever steps are necessary in the natural realizing that they're not by themselves lord god but they are part partnering with you for your will to be done in the earth in the name of Jesus Lord hallelujah and I decree that even as Caleb said I once was young but now I'm old but I'm still just as strong as I was when I first received the promise there are some Lord God that you gave them promises you know five years ago 10 years ago 15 years ago 20 years ago there are some it was 50, 25 30 years ago it was 40 years ago it was others of them Lord you gave them promises a long time ago oh but God I just decree the strength is rising up in them. Hey, Lady Marie, Ellie, love you. Hallelujah. The, the, the strength is rising up in them, Lord, and they are going to decree that they are just as strong now as they were then, and they will say, give me my mountain. I'm taking my mountain. I am taking it for the Lord. I'm going to do everything that he called for me to do, everything that he put in my spirit to do, every dream in which he's given me, every vision, hallelujah, that I will birth it, and I will birth it in in the time in which he's called for me to birth it, Isaiah 66 and 9. Oh my God, it says that shall I bring you to the birth and not cause you to bring forth, Lord God. You don't, you, you ain't selling no wolf tickets. You know, you, you, you don't get down like that. I thank you, Lord God, that your promises are yes and amen for the glory of the Lord, that you have already given us everything, everything that pertained to your exceeding precious promises and your people, hallelujah, shall possess their possession for the glory of of the Lord, they shall take it. Hallelujah! That the kingdom suffereth violent, but the violent take it by force. They will take it by force in the name of Jesus you have given us power. Hallelujah! To tread upon serpents, Lord God. I thank you that these are they that will trample over whatever is necessary and come into everything that you've spoken in the name of Jesus and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed in them and the glory of the Lord shall be fulfilled over them and in their lives in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, that you're doing it. I thank you, Lord God, that you're making it happen. I thank you, Lord God, that they will not be defeated. You alone are worthy, oh God. Hallelujah. And they are taking everything that you said was theirs in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because that which they have birthed and that which they shall birth shall bruise the Araba soul. It will crush the head of every enemy in the name of Jesus. They might have had some bruising, but they're going to crush every enemy for the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. And I just decree by the blood that what should be shall be and it absolutely will not be otherwise. They have not come this far to only come this far, but they shall possess everything that you spoke in the name of Jesus. They shall enter into their promised land. They shall enter into their promised land place. They shall enter even into that palace, oh God. They shall enter into everything that you spoke. They shall enter into the promise for you alone are faithful. Hallelujah. You're faithful to perform it. You're faithful to do it, oh God. So we cast not away, therefore, our confidence, understanding that it has great recompense of reward. And he that shall come will come and he will not tarry. 
Oh God, we have had needed of patience that after we've done the will of God, we will inherit every promise. I decree by the blood that we shall inherit every promise for the glory of the Lord in Jesus' name. We shall cross over, hallelujah, every every river, every sea, every or whatever we need to cross over. Ain't no mountain high enough, ain't no valley low enough to keep us from you and what you've destined and predestined in the assignment over our life in the name of Jesus, Lord. I thank you, Lord God, that your people are coming to everything that you're spoken. They are crossing over and they are taking possession in the name of Jesus. And I just decree by the blood that they will not be too tired to fight. They will not be too tired to take over. They will not be too, too tired. They will not get there and lack what is necessary to overcome in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you that you're causing it to be so. In the name of Jesus, we are confident of this very thing that he that has begun a good work in us shall perform it unto the day of Christ Jesus according to Philippians 1 and 6 and according to Hebrews 10 38 we are not of them that draw back but we believe unto the saving of the soul and so father I thank you that you will not cause us to come up empty-handed but we will possess everything that you spoke in Jesus name we decree it to be so amen and amen Hallelujah. Blessings to you all. I love y'all with the love of the Lord. And I'm so grateful that the spirit of the living God is going to cause these things to be in Jesus mighty name. And so too shall it be over your life in the name of Jesus. And so we just love you with the love of God. I'm so excited for what he is doing in your life. Go on ahead and put it in the chat. If you've made your decision, I'm taking it. And now I'm taking it in now It's mine and I want it now. It is mine and I want it now not just I want it that's not just enough I'm taking it and I'm taking it now it's time I realize that and I will not hallelujah be denied in the name of Jesus listen I love y'all with the love of the Lord again I can't say it enough God's love is faithful it goes before you and so you have no need of fear you have no need of spoil come on taking it and taking it now in Jesus name if you desire to uh, connect with us or if you need a one-on-one -on -one session coaching anything you you can go to ladyjeremia.com. If you believe, God, that this word is for you and you feel led to sow into that, you can do that at paypal.me forward slash ladyjeremia. The Venmo is the same or the cash app is dollar sign M mana one. Trust in the Lord. Make sure you put in that subject line what you're believing God for so that I can touch and agree with you as we trust in the Lord together because you're going to see that thing come to pass in Jesus name. To God be the glory, brother Jerome. God bless you. Hallelujah. So be it unto you all in Jesus name. And don't forget to send your testimony. It was the 10 lepers that Jesus healed, but only one came back to say thank you, to tell his testimony. And to him, he was made whole where there was nothing missing, lacking or broken. Lord, I don't want to just be healed in the area, but I want to be whole. Everything that is due me, everything that's supposed to come back to me, everything, you know, that was, I want everything that belongs to me that got my name on it. I decree it to be so in Jesus name. Blessings to you, Lady Emily. And those of you, if I didn't get to greet you, hopefully I'll be able to do it on the next live. Make sure if you haven't yet, like the video and subscribe. God bless you. Talk soon.